moms out there. Hey dads. We're back today with our Homeschool 101 series. Today we'll be covering the HSLDA. Which means what, love? The Homeschool Legal Defense Association. <laughs> it's a mouthful. <laughs> Try to say that 10 times fast. All right, guys, so <laughs> when you're homeschooling, it's so important to not feel alone. When we first, first started off, we had nobody to go to about homeschooling. Okay, we are first generation homeschoolers. Yeah. I was never homeschooled. I was never homeschooled. Went to the public school all throughout high school and college. Yes. So, so. the benefits of homeschooling. We are seeing that as we are homeschooling these kiddos right behind us, guys. We are loving the fact that they are able to increase in their education and they don't have to be stagnant, stuck in one place. And so what is homeschool all about? The whole purpose of this and the reason why we're sharing with you guys is that it's all about freedom. This whole situation is about freedom when it comes to schooling, mm -hmm. your choice of schooling, yes. whether it be public school, private school, homeschool, which is also private school, you want to have the freedom to school. Yes. And when we're talking about homeschooling, we're talking about total freedom. Yes. Total. As a parent to teach your child. Imagine this situation. You've been homeschooling your child for a while and all of a sudden the social worker comes from a public school district and they knock on your door and they ask you to take pictures of your homeschool work and all the history of your child's homeschooling. And so you wonder, why is the public school system at my door? And a social worker at that. Well, they're there to pry into your personal business and the rights that you have as a parent to teach your child. They're not really there to see how well you're doing. They're there to see how well you're not doing. They came unannounced as a surprise the parents, they question this and they call the HSLDA. And the HSLDA, they're like, well, what happened? And so they contact the public school system and they ask the director of the public school system, well, why are your representatives showing up at the door of our homeschool family? And they recognize that the homeschool family has sent in a proper documentation to the state because sometimes that's required. And they did everything they're supposed to do, so they shouldn't have someone coming to their door. Mm -hmm. And so, this is what the HSLDA is there for. Just imagine you are out and about with your kids during school time hours, right? Because when you homeschool, there's no school time hours unless you want them to be. You can decide to homeschool at nighttime if you want to. It's whatever works for your family. That's freedom. So just imagine you're at the grocery store shopping, and people are like, Hey kids, totally disregard you. Mm -hmm. Hey kids, and this has happened to yeah, us before. Several times. How are you guys doing? Why are you guys not in school? And we're looking like it ain't none of your business, right? When my kids not school, they're like, huh? We homeschool. And you get down like, you talking to me? <laughs> Next thing you know, they call a social worker on you and say that you're abusing your kids. Really? I'm abusing my kids. In the grocery store. In a grocery store. <laughs> well, you have a right to be offended. But also, they are knocking at your door and they're asking to come in to violate your privacy, to check your kids' bodies and see where they're living at. They're not allowed to do that. And if they have a police officer with them, then you want to ask them why they came to your door and why is the police there? You did not commit a crime. After that, you want to immediately get on your phone and call the HSLDA during their business time hours because usually when these happens, it's during their daytime. Okay, so the HSLDA has an emergency number that you can call and they'll get on the phone right away. They may even ask to talk to the people and they'll make sure that you're taken care of. Yeah, because we have Fourth Amendment rights as citizens of the United States. And so what that means is that People can't just come in your house because you have the right to proper search and seizures. Mm -hmm. Which means that they have to have a warrant or some reasonable cause. And in this case, they can't just come into your house. You have legal rights. And so that's the reason why you call the HSLDA in order to get them on the phone, have them talk to 
your legal representation, which will be the HSLDA, and then your rights are properly handled. When you pay into the HSLDA every year, every month, whatever you're doing month or if you're doing annually. yearly or annually, yeah, that they, they're your attorneys. That's who you call when someone comes knocking at your door, asking to see your children, asking to look into your homeschool files, asking to check your kids' attendance. I mean, literally, I don't even get why we have to take attendance because there are kids. They're home with us each and every day. They're present. They're always here. <laughs> but a lot of states require that you take attendance, okay? Mm -hmm. So, fine. I'll put a little check mark in a computer, in my documents, whatever, to show that my kids who always live with me are here. There we go. So those are just some examples that we wanted to give you guys of the reason why you want the HSLDA on your side. We need the freedom and we need that freedom to be able to homeschool our kids. We need legal protection to be able to homeschool our kids. Legal protection in homeschool is becoming ever so more important as new laws and regulations come upon us to try to restrict us of our Fourth Amendment right. Yes, and the school systems are constantly coming up against homeschool education and they're always coming up against the HSLDA who defends homeschool education in order to have the state come in and so-called regulate yeah. our homes. The organization that is a big spearhead on trying to get the state into our homes is called the Coalition for Responsible Homeschool Education. Sounds pretty good, huh? But it's not what it is. On the surface, it sounds good, but it's really just an organization that is trying to take our rights away as parents in the United yes. States. And the examples that we just gave you earlier were actual examples from the HSLDA newsletter when you sign up to get it that they'll give to you in your email. So the HSLDA is a nonprofit advocacy organization that makes homeschooling possible for you and me. And that's a mouthful. But they protect our rights. They keep us safe and they keep us up on the loop on what our government agencies are trying to do to discredit us or take away our homeschool rights. They've been in business for over 35 years, so they have lots of experience. They have a lot of people that go to these legislators and they advocate on our behalf. And they also come up with rules and regulations so that the state will follow those rules and regulations. And they also make sure that they are following those rules and regulations, doing whatever it takes to make sure that we are free yes. to teach our kids. They empower and they encourage homeschooling families and they take all the legal writing and they summarize it down so that us who are not familiar with all the legal terminology can understand it so we know okay hey we need to stop what we're doing we need to go vote for this we need to go fill out this petition they want to keep us in a loop so that we understand what our rights are in I guess layman terms yeah right? and that's, that's the reason why we have them yes so <laughs> You don't have to feel like you need to know every single thing. That's what the HSLDA is there for. So that they can defend us. We don't have to defend ourselves. Yes. You always get legal defense no matter what. And all the lawyers are very well trained. Even the secretary that answers your call when you call in. They know about your state laws. Because if you're part of their membership, they know where you are. And they know what your state requirements are. And they'll fight for you based on what your state requirements are. They'll make sure you have all your stuff in, all your paperwork. They will also go to court for you and petition on your behalf, which is what a lawyer does, right? When it comes to homeschooling. But, you know, it's bad enough that sometimes the public look at you when you're out with your kids thinking, oh, your kids are not in school. And the main reason why they try to make it illegal is so that they can get all of the government money that comes from the state as well as the federal government. Exactly. It's Take all attendance. about attendance. It's and all money. about testing because at the end of the day, it's all about that dollar. Yes, so in some states, they do require some homeschool families to have their kids go to testing. Why? It's all about the money, of course. The state wants money. And so they want to make sure that even if you are homeschooling, you still have to force your kid to test. Some homeschool families find themselves stuck between freedom and teaching their kids to test. Because, let's just be real, in public school, they pretty much teach your kids the test that they're going to take at the end of the year so that they can get their funding in. If everybody fails, the school loses money. And more than ever now, many families are choosing to homeschool their kids because they're realizing that 
the whole atmosphere of public school is not right for their kids. A lot of parents have realized that their kids were not really learning. As they sat at the monitor or watched their kids with distance learning, because that's not homeschool, let's get it right. Distance learning that they did during the whole quarantine thing is not homeschool. Many people say, I'm forced to homeschool. No, you're not. <laughs> okay, your kids are distance learning Definitely with the teacher and the government still in your house. Yeah. Okay? That's different, and parents get scared, like, I can't do this. Well, distance learning is not freedom. Yeah. But so, especially with the coronavirus and the pandemic issues going on, all the chaos, right? This allows the state to now try to pry more into your life because they see, well, we've been doing a lot of so-called homeschool. It's not really homeschool, like we said. Yeah. It's just distance learning. Yeah. And... They say, well, I think we need to regulate even more now. Now that we see our kids are stuck in these homes and now we feel like there's a lot more fear that is related to homeschooling. And so <laughs> now they're trying to see how they can regulate homeschooling even more because they feel like this is a problem. If too many people start homeschooling, then we're going to lose a lot more funding. And they're not able to indoctrinate our kids anymore yeah. with the programming from the government. Because mm -hmm. the government is programming their children in public schools. That's just what public school is. If you look into the history of public schooling, it was never about educating the kids. It was always about programming your kids to be a certain way in society so that they can control us. The school districts were already talking about the fact that they lost 10% of their funding. They're going to have to do some cuts. And they say, man, we got to do something about this. And the reason why Ryan is speaking on that, because he works in the public school district system. <laughs> he knows a good amount. <laughs> so on their website, they have grants. They have partnered with donors to come alongside courageous families like ourselves and you guys okay you guys are courageous if you're homeschooling you have courage okay they come alongside us and they give us money to afford curriculum to afford school supplies paper pencils all those things and that's all you need to homeschool guys and if you've experienced a natural disaster such as a hurricane or flooding or anything like that they want to make sure you're still able to homeschool your kids they're going to come right aside with you and give you some money so you can get the curriculum and things that you need so without further ado let's get online here's what it looks like online right here here's the website it is hslda.org and this is how to get started i'm in the how to get started tab okay first we're going to go to the seven steps to start homeschooling and that's found in the explore homeschooling tab so let's go down here so here seven steps to start homeschooling step one connect with parents who are already homeschooled so that's what you guys are doing there you're connecting with us yeah. we are your homeschool family understand your state's homeschool law that's very important you need to know what the laws are in your homeschool. I'm going to show you guys how to sign up. And you go to Getting Started Again. Explore HSLDA Membership. And here you can read all about what they do. This is what we're doing right here. We're paying $11 a month. However, you can pay annually. This is all the things that we were telling you about. When you hit the Join Today button, it'll tell you everything else. If you scroll down, you'll see as a member you only pay $130 a year or $11 a month per family. They have also all these things right here, what it costs without the HSLDA. So this is why, guys, it's very important to have legal yes. defense on your side because if you look at these prices it's right expensive. here, it is very expensive. Look at this. These are like typical lawyer fees, and we can do without that kind of stuff. This is everything that it includes. I'm going to let you guys look, read through this, keep it on the screen for a little bit. Once you guys have filled out the applications, you become an HSLDA member you would get a membership card and you get two of them each parent can have one and so you'll get a piece of paper that looks like this and i covered our address because that's where we live and you'll get two cards attached so if you look underneath you'll see that i have two cards i'm not showing you the front of the card because it just has our information but right here you have two cards 
one for mom and one for dad. So now I want to take you guys to the legal part. So we go to homeschool by law, homeschool laws by state. You type in your state. And if you look down here, it tells you which state has the highest regulation. If it's blue, there's no notice required to homeschool. If it's light blue, it's low regulation. And if it's sort of, was that purple or violet? It's like a moderate regulation. If it's like dark purple, it's a high regulation. Here's all your states right here. And there's some frequently asked questions here. Now let me show you guys what it's like for us. We are from California. So we live in a low regulated state so let's click on california because that's the example i want to show you and it tells you right here california homeschool law at a glance options for schooling you have three options for schooling uh school required for ages which is 6 to 18 notification required yes now these are all if you want to homeschool on your own without an umbrella school we will teach you guys the different types of homeschool in a different video so again there's no assessments required and no immunization is required in our state. So you go here and see what's required of your state. I think the highest regulated cities or states, I'm, I'm sorry, are Vermont, New York, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. The HSLDA will hold your hand and they will guide you through every process of how you can officially homeschool your kids and have your fourth amendment right let's go to the next tab the next tab here is under legal action center so we have the legal action center tab right here and here it shows you all of the current things these are some of the things that the hslda are fighting for in order to keep our freedoms for homeschooling in your specific state you'll see on this page that there are different things that are going on in different states yes. and so they're fighting all across the country for our freedoms and even outside of our country. And they put it on here because they want you guys to know in layman terms what it is and what they're doing. Now we are here in the community tab. Here you will find ways for protecting your children from abuse. You can sign up for their newsletter and this is very important guys, I can't stress this enough. You wanna get up to date on everything that's going on regarding homeschool. Here you will find where you can sign up for the grants for homeschooling and also find homeschooling groups that you can get together with the homeschool family that's near you. There's national organizations, state and local organizations, overseas military support groups, homeschool networks, resources, national vendors, all kinds of stuff on this page. Mm -hmm. So let me take you guys to the grant section real quick. Here's grants for homeschooling. That's what we were talking about earlier. Granting hope to homeschool families and need. You can also give. You can be a part of their giving. It's always good to give. Mm -hmm. And here they tell you what type of homeschool grants are available, how to apply for a curriculum grant, and how to apply for a disaster relief grant. Right. And this is what it covers. Curriculum, school materials, homeschool, courses, classes, co-ops, all that stuff that your kids and you will love. And they also have uh, funds for diagnostic testing and therapies for children with special learning needs. Here's how you can qualify. Now we're gonna go to the last thing and that is in the community tab and it's called protecting children from abuse. Now because they're fighting for our rights, they wanna make sure that we understand about child abuse because a lot of times Somebody can call the authorities on you and say that you're abusing your child when it's not true. So if you're doing co-ops or you're with families and things like that and you're homeschoolers, you want to know what to look out for. So this tab will show you how to keep your kids safe. Like I said, you always want to be with your kids no matter if you're doing co-op, class swapping, whatever it is. Even keeping your little kids safe from older kids if you're meeting in groups. Kids can get into stuff. They don't mean to, but they do. But since you're homeschooling your kids, you have more power and control over who your kids are with. This article right here will help you learn how to prevent child abuse, safety principles, which is something we just told you right now about always being with your child. Just because you're homeschooling doesn't mean you can just be negligent and forget about your kids. Just let them go do whatever they're going to do. And then you get them back and you're just like, yay, we're done. You have to be active parents in your child's life that's the whole point mm -hmm. and so that's what we do as homeschooling families so we have sexual abuse prevention resources as well as if you suspect child abuse which is what we just talked about yes, and developing a child protection policy and then we have protecting children with a background check policy 
There you go. So, of course, if you're doing different classes outside um, of their regular homeschool atmosphere, then if you have people coming in to teach your kids, you want to definitely check this article out right here. Yes. And here is the sign up button for their newsletter. I think it's on every page, but it's necessary. We're going to go ahead and put all the things that you need for the HSLDA of how to contact them on the screen. But you can go and explore the website. So that was our tutorial for today. Our Homeschool 101 series, all about the HSLDA. Yes. And we hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was very informative to you guys. If you have any comments about this video, leave them in a the comment box below. We want to hear everything you have to say, yes. or you can email us at our email address listed on this page as well, and we will respond to you as quick as we can. Yeah, especially if you have any questions. So our next video is going to be on the different types of homeschool. We'll see you in our next video. Bye. All May right. God bless you and your family. Thank you for joining us and gleaning information from us, and we can't wait to hear from you. Thank you. God Bye. bless. Bye.